We're done with the introduction to ethics. We'll now proceed to Chapter 6, Business Ethics. For this chapter, we'll be discussing the basic concept of business ethics, its purposes, scope and impact, and the ethical challenges in today's world. So let's start with the definition of business ethics. It refers to the standards of moral conduct, behavior, and judgment in business. It involves making the moral and right decisions while engaging in such business activities as manufacturing and selling a product and providing service to others or to the customers. It is an area of corporate responsibility where businesses are legally bound and socially obligated to conduct business in an ethical manner. So you'll notice that observing business ethics is not just a legal obligation, but also a social obligation. It's based on the personal values and standards of each person engaged in business. So there are a lot of purposes of business ethics. Let's start with its main purpose. So the purpose is to help business and would-be business to determine what business practices are right and what are wrong. So if you can remember from my previous discussion, my floating question ako dun na paano ba natin malalaman if our actions are right or wrong. So in cases of businesses, ito yung magiging basis nila kung alin yung right or wrong. So base sa business ethics. But of course, knowledge alone is not enough. It would be best that these businesses apply such knowledge in making business decisions. Corollary to the main purpose, the special purposes of business ethics are, first, to make businessmen realize that they cannot employ double standards to the actions of other people and to their own actions. To show businessmen that common practices which they have thought to be right because they see other businessmen doing it are really wrong. So not because others are doing something and not being caught doesn't make such actions right. Next purpose is to serve as a standard or ideal upon which business conduct should be based. Because there is no one universal standard code of ethics, everyone has to evaluate a situation according to his or her own belief. To assist the business world in formulating codes of conduct, personal, company, and professional, which can be used as a guide in formulating business plans and strategies and in making business decisions. So that is also one of the special purposes of business ethics. Same with the Code of Corporate Governance. This is an aid for better decision making for all businesses. For the third section of this chapter, the scope and impact of business ethics. The scope or the coverage is all conduct, behavior, and judgment in business. And the first point is that actions that are not forbidden by law are not always ethical. The general rule is when something is not forbidden by law, then such is ethical. However, it's not always the case. Not because there is a, no law prohibiting something doesn't mean it is right. So, in ya, actions not forbidden are not always ethical. Business ethics covers acts that may be legal or not forbidden by law, but which are wrong because they violate ethical principles. So, take note, ulit no legal ethical creed. There is no uniform standard of what is right and wrong because what is ethical or unethical varies from one person to another. So one example of the observance of business ethics is fair business competition. Competition among businesses is not bad. It becomes bad only when it is unfair. So more of this will be discussed in Chapter 7, the unethical business practices. So in fair business competition, the success is gained by the merits of one's goods or services. So to continue section three, we have 
the impact of business ethics. There are four, economic impact, social impact, environmental impact, and the impact on business managers. So for the first one, we have the economic impact. Positive economic impact is achieved when employees are fairly and timely paid with their wages and benefits, when materials purchased from the suppliers are being paid on time, when the prices paid by the customers equate to the quality of the product or service that they receive. Then for the second part, the social impact of business ethics. Ethics of the society will suffer when there are cases of bribes, fraud, corruption, and others. For example, raw materials were purchased at a very low cost. So, mababa lang yung total manufacturing cost. But if there is corruption within the company, pwedeng dayain nila yung cost. Tapos, as a result, the consumers will suffer kasi magiging pricey na masyado yung product. Then, for the third one, the environmental impact, energy and waste reduction. In effect, bukod sa mare-reduce mo yung cost ng company, for sure mapopromote din yung company mo and yung positive image nito. And whenever it happens, the customers, the competitors would likely do the same. So, sa pataas yung beneficial effect niya sa government and sa environment. For example, uh, companies ABC and DEF are competitors. And then uh, company ABC is known for being environmentally protective. So the tendency of company DEF ay gayahin yung promotion ng company ABC. So when it happens, mas sapat as yung magiging beneficial effect niya. For everyone. Then for the fourth part, uh, we have the impact on business managers. The best interest of the business versus the law and conscience of the business managers. Of course, business managers are expected to always act for the best interest of the company. However, they cannot be always expected to do so, especially when such interests are contrary to their own principles. So what should a manager do? A manager should acknowledge that his or her role is to serve the business enterprise and the community. He or she should avoid all this abuse of executive power for personal gain, advantage, or prestige. He or she should also reveal the fact to his superior whenever his personal business of financial interests conflict with those of the company. For example, we have a printing business, and I'm one of the managers. For example, our company is MJT Company. Then, aside from being a manager, I have another business. I have my own business, which is manufacturing paper products. So, yung company natin, nag print uh, books, flyers, etc. And then, yung personal business ko ay nagmamanufacture ng paper products. Ngayon, sinabi ko sa board ng printing business natin na sa akin na mag-purchase ng papers. This could be considered as a conflict of interest. Not technically prohibited, but it must be closely monitored para maiwasan na mag-clash yung personal interest ko na kumita yung personal business ko and yung interest ng printing business natin considering that I'm one of the managers of our company. Next, uh, a manager should be actively concerned with the difficulties and problems of subordinates. He or she should recognize that his subordinates have a right to information on all matters affecting them. He or she should fully evaluate the likely effects on employees and the community of the business plans for the future before taking a final decision.
then also a manager should cooperate with his or her colleagues and not attempt to secure personal advantage at their expense. Then for the last part, we have the ethical challenges in today's world. So common na nagka-clash ay ethics and the business pursuit of profit. There is an inherent conflict between these two. In an article entitled Ethical Challenges in Today's World, the author said that corporate governance, which has become a buzzword in financial and capital markets, is ethics-based. So yung inaral natin sa chapters 3 and 4 in the SEC Code of Corporate Governance, it's a form of application ng business ethics. And so we have seen a rise in government regulations in the adoption of corporate governance codes, in the formulation of codes of conduct, in the strict observance of international financial standards. We are seeing that ethical behavior is the best long-term business strategy for a company. She said that ethics and business are incompatible and that economics and religion never the twain can meet. She ended the article by saying that ethics must be central to any ordering of human affairs. So to sum it up, there is a conflict between these two, ethics and pursuit of profit. So what should businesses do? Of course, uh, all businesses must integrate ethics in pursuing business profits. Hindi dapat masasacrifice yung ethical practices ng isang company para lang ma-achieve yung target na sales, target na profit, or number of production. So yun, that's all for Chapter 6. If you have questions or clarifications, then I'm just a message away. Thank you!